So welcome to my shop, uh, my first episode of Tool Tuesdays. Uh, and the first episode, I want to talk about my hand planes. Um, I had some, because I had some comments about people asking me why I didn't use sanders for for um, um, making the pegs um, for the post and beam. Um, so w one of the things is, of course, I'm, I'm off grid, so... I can't just plug into power really easy and 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 so it's it's difficult because I have to start a generator and I have and 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 to use a sander I'd have to do that. So it really doesn't go very well with off grid. Try and use as hand tools as much as possible. Um and the other thing is um it it's more it was more authentic because you know they didn't win the pioneers and um, people that first started using post and beam construction, they didn't have uh, power sanders, so they had to use hand planes. And I think a lot of people don't really understand how good hand planes can be. Um, one of the other things is, um, if you if you take a look at the the end of this, you see that it's it's not perfectly round. I could have used like a, a dowel. I have dowels. Okay, so the reason that that you want to have that like that is because you're with the ridges is because you have a hard wood peg going into soft wood. And what it does is it compresses the soft wood to match the shape of the hard wood. Kind of like driving a, a, a wedge in a mortise and tenon joint or something like that. It It makes the softwood move out of the way of the hardwood, but it also helps the softwood just kind of grab onto the peg. So it's in there super tight. And, and and that's what you want because you don't want it loosening up over the years. You don't want it loosening up over 10 years or over 100 years. I mean, um, they have, they've used this form of construction for thousands of years and buildings have lasted. So it's it's really important that you kind of follow the way that the old craftsmen, the old builders did it. Now, um, okay, so this is where I keep my hand planes. Um, just bring them down. That's so that there is a smoothing plane. These are made in Germany by ECE. They're about 250 to, they're probably over $300 now. This one here is a jack plane. This one is a smoothing plane. Smoothing plane has, if you notice, that the throat has a little piece there that can be adjusted with a screw on top. So what that does is that allows you to move close the throat on the blade, which helps stop tear out when you're smoothing a board. The jack plane has a bit of a steeper angle and is more for um, putting an edge on a board, like a right-angled edge, um, or doing the first cuts. I also, from the same company, have this. Um, it's a scrub plane, and it's got a rounded blade, and it's just for scrubbing the wood down. <sighs> then I have their little mini plane, which I use for forty for doing forty fives. I also have planes. I have this little guy that I don't use very much. As you can see, I've tried flattening it because the, the, the it should be flat, but it's it's not a very good plane. I have a uh, rally plane for beveling. Um, I have a spoke shave, which I could have used too. And, and, and that's a form of a plane. Um, but like I said, I think using the hand plane was the right tool. Um, I also have like scrapers. There's a scraper. And I have this little guy here, which someone had, it's all dusty. Someone had in their uh, basement. Actually, this was my uh, mother-in-law had it in the basement. From some relative. I spent a lot of time sharpening that blade and I've used it for making house trim. Um, 
Some of the other things too that that would go with plating would be scrapers. Um, I also have curved scrapers. There. Okay, so. So one of the things that, that I use that I'll grab a hand plane for is if I'm finishing a, uh, like a tabletop when I've glued it together and you know, you're, there's obviously high spots on it. I don't have a, uh, a four foot wide, um, uh, flattening sander or, or a, a thickness sander. So I have to take the ha the high spots off myself. I have a four inch belt sander. I tend to find that's really awkward and sometimes it can take too much and, and it just doesn't have the right feel. Um, so I, en I end up using my hand plane um, or my hand planes and then I'll also use sander. So I tend to use both. Um, there, there are a lot of woodworkers out there who do not use any sandpaper. Uh, show you why in a minute. Um, I'm going to give you a... Um, so I have my, my, uh, so my thickness planer there and I have my joiner there. And I use them. However, when you plane a piece of wood in those two pieces of machinery, you'll get what's called a planing glaze. So what happens is when the, the, the blades are on a round wheel, what happens every time they come down and hit the wood, they make a cut, but they also push the wood down and compress it. So when you're finished with a piece of wood like that, you'll end up with all these little planar marks in it. Um, two things wrong with the planar marks is they don't, one is they don't look good. Um, and especially if you put a finish on it, they look awful. And the other thing is, is that they don't accept finish very well because now you've compressed the wood and it doesn't, it, so they, if you're, if you're, were to finish something like, let's say this chair, everything had to be kind of scuff sanded on here, except like all these slats, any, all these parts I found on here that needed to be, um, that needed, I mean, you could use a sander, but then you would have to take a sander, <clears throat> start with 80 grit, switch to uh, 100, 120 grit, and then you get the 120 grit and you'd have the scratches in there from that. So what I did was I just take all these pieces, um, put them in my, um, in, in my clamp there, and I run the hand plane over them a couple times and they're perfectly good. So hand planes are really handy for that sort of thing. Like I said, you have to sand out that, that planer glaze anyways. Um, the other thing that, I've, that I had to use the uh, hand planes were with this. These, these are the stringers for my stairs. Okay. Now there's no way that my joiner, it's an eight inch joiner, would do these boards. And you can't just fit it through a thickness planer because what'll happen is whatever's not even on the boards, which they aren't, actually it's been, these have been sitting here for a while. And I guess either my floor is not even, or they've kind of moved a little bit, so I might have to go over them again. Um, so what I did was, uh, you could use, I think they're called winding sticks. You put a stick on one end and a stick on the other end and you sight down it. My eyesight's not that good anymore. So what I used was uh, a laser level. I put my laser level on a spot in the middle and then I, I cut a stick that would just kind of bisect the, the laser level and then I would run the laser level down. I would run the stick down the board in front of the laser level and plane, hand plane the high spots. I think I've worked these boards good enough that I can put them through my thickness planer and they'll be straight. It was a lot of work, but it, I didn't have a, I didn't have much of a choice. Um, so that's, that's another one of the reasons that you would, you would be using hand planes. I, I do have an electric 
playing too that I use a little bit, but it tends to be aggressive and not have a lot of feel. And it's not as fast because it's heavy. I, I, I grab onto my plane. It's, it's light. It's made out of wood. I just zip, zip, zip. I get the high spot down. I move on to the next piece. It, it's tedious, but then, I mean, how was furniture made like a hundred years ago? No. Okay. So I'm going to try and show you. I don't know if you can see that. I should put my glasses on. You guys can probably see better than me. Anyways. Do I have chatter on this board? This is a piece of walnut. Yeah, I have planar chatter on that. Not sure if that lined up with the camera, but I have planar chatter on that. One of the other things, too, about using a hand plane, I'm going to use my jack plane for this. That's this one here. This, this was a gift uh, um, by my other daughter. Uh, and her husband, and um, they got it at a garage sale, and it's, I've sharpened them, the big thing about hand planes, of course, is sharpening, but um, I come down in the shop sometimes, if I've had a stressful day, and I do this for a couple minutes. There, that's how you can tell you get a sharp, you get a sharp blade. Um, now I don't know if you'll be able to see this, but it's shiny. It has a sheen to it. In other words, you couldn't take sandpaper and get that smooth finish on there. You can see it better there. Um... The other thing that, for me, what I like about this is it's very calming. Call it Huga. Uh, I'm going to get another board here. So, if you can see me, Huga is uh, the feeling you get when you're by a fire. I think it's Finnish or something. It's just how you feel, right? It's just kind of, I don't know, maybe it's because it's getting us back to uh, our roots where we were as humans. Um, but it gives me a, a, a calm feeling. Now, okay, so this is my scrub plane. The way these work is they have a wedge. I can use this. you got to make sure that's in. You can adjust the wedge deeper just by tapping that. You see this little spot at the back here. If you find the blade is out too far, you set it down on your piece of wood. And usually you should use a bit of a heavier mallet than that. They, they make actually brass ones. And you tap the back of that. And it will drive, drive it in. So you have a piece of wood that's... don't know if this is necessary. And it's not really, but it does remove a lot of material. I think the board drops off here. Now I'll grab my jack plane. I don't have it deep enough. So I'm just gonna make this. One of the things you should you can do too with a jack plane is to get something straight, is move it in at an angle at first. Okay, I'm getting a bit of chatter here. So I think I'm having the grain going in the wrong direction. It's going in both ways. 
going to concentrate on this end of the board. It's the sort of thing that you may have to switch. Now my cuts are too deep. I think it's time for the uh, smoothing plane. Okay, this one here. I probably have this one set pretty shallow. Oh, eh. a little bit. Okay. Can you see the reflection there? It's like it's uh try and hold the light closer. It's the light reflecting off the top. Like I said, <laughs> you can use Okay, if you can see that, it's kind of dull. As opposed to this. Now that looks a lot better. Sandpaper. Hand plane. So you, as you can see using a hand plane, not only is it kind of fun, I like doing it, it's very calming for me. It, <laughs> it gets me out of breath as you could hear. Um, but it I I'm, don't think, I've never trusted myself at sharpening enough. I, I know I've, I have done some bits of furniture using just hand planes. Um, but I think this video is more about what you can do with them. And that's a place that you can go on how important hand planes are to you. Now, I'm going to, just for fun... I don't know if my um, um, if my beading plane is sharp enough. <laughs> well, well, I guess I'm gonna try it here so you can see it in action. Yes, I haven't used this in a while, so wish me luck. Okay, come on. Yeah, I gotta tap this forward slightly. Still more. Still wanna tap it forward too far. Starting to get a little bit difficult. Back off the blade slightly. 
It's because it's cutting more wood now as it's... There we go. bead. It's amazing what the old guys used to be able to do. Here's the other good thing about hand planes. Our kitchen table was getting really worn. Um, needed to be sanded but it just doesn't fit through the door unless I take the top off and then it's a solid oak. Um, table made by Mennonites locally, inch and an eighth thick oak. So I took my smoothing plane and planed the top off and put a new finish on it. Um, no dust. Like I couldn't go and take my sanders, even though I have really good sanders, and I take them up into my kitchen and no matter what kind of dust extraction you're using, you're still going to get a lot of dust sneaking out of there. Um, yeah, one other thing I wanted to mention, um, and that's the planer glaze. Um, <laughs> I had, in, in the houses I built, I probably had the best stair builder in Southern Ontario. He was famous. Um, he got a little bit expensive and he got too busy to do the one set of stairs. So I went around looking for other stair makers and I found this guy who was really popular. Everyone was using his stairs and I went into his house and he was showing me his house and um, how he makes the stairs and all this. Um, I took a look at his windows and he had oak trim and I saw planar glaze on his trim that he finished and I'm kind of like, nah, <laughs> I'm not going to use this guy. If you're that sloppy that you can't sand planar glaze out, then you really have no business making stairs or doing anything in woodworking, frankly. Um, like I said, hand planes are, are, are great if you learn to handle them and you sharpen them really good. They're not really a whole lot more work because to take that planar glaze out of what he did there, he would have spent like maybe you know, hours and hours, days, actually sanding the wood down um, to the proper finish. And sometimes when I'm making furniture and I'm sanding, I'll, I'll go right down to about um, 220 with regular sandpaper, and then I'll start at 280. I'll do a, um, I'll wet sand it like with tongue oil. I'll go down to 280 and 400 and 600 sandpaper. Um, and, and what sanded down to get a nice smooth finish. Well, I mean, if you're using the hand plane, um, you don't have to do all that. So, you know, which is more work? Okay, till next time.